All right, you guys, this is episode 17 of Inner Demons. You know what? I'm going to start this out by saying this. Um, you know, I wasn't going to even do an episode on Inner Demons today. I've been working on a profile for you guys that I wanted to drop this week, and I was deep off into that profile. But then I started reading some of the comments on uh, that people made after episode 16. And there was one comment in particular that caught my eye. And usually I don't respond to comments when I'm doing um, these episodes. But um, there was something that, that was said that uh, I just, I have to respond to it. So this viewer, um, I, and I forget your name, Rumpelstiltskin or some old crazy shit like that. But anyway, the viewer had said something to the effect of basically after, after you lied to the Southsiders once they found out that you guys were gonna move on them. I can't believe nothing that comes out your mouth. So, you know, I held off on, on, on ripping into this this cat because I wanna make sure that I understood this dude right. I'm, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. But let me get this right, man. You must be somebody that don't know shit about prison politics. Because if you're telling me that you don't believe nothing that comes out of my mouth or my credibility shot out because I didn't tell Eddie boy from Dinuba when they came and approached me on the yard and they asked me if the rumor that they heard was true about us supposedly, um, no, we were supposedly getting ready to move on them. If you're saying my credibility shot out because I didn't cop to it and, and tip my hand and tell him, oh yeah, you know what? That's a credible rumor, homeboy. Uh, yeah, we were getting ready to move on you guys at the last unlock tonight. Or better yet, uh, in the chow hall. Bro, you got to be kidding me, man. You must not know shit about prison politics. Why are you even on this channel, man? I don't understand your logic. I don't understand your thinking. But um, hey, if my credibility shot out because... Uh, <laughs> because I didn't tip my hand and um you know I wasn't straight up and told uh, about telling Eddie boy about what they had heard man you you're uh your thinking is just it's fucked up hopefully somebody like you will never fucking make president or will never be in a leadership position that will end up hurting other people because you'll be you'll be bad for the home team I guarantee you man no why don't you just change the channel? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let me get straight into this, man. So, episode 17. So, I already talked about how the incident transpired in the chow hall. Um, how we were all taken to the to the watch office. We sat there and I, we had to go through Chinese torture where they put us in handcuffs for like seven or eight hours. Um, for those of you that that are not familiar with prison or don't know what happens when an incident like this happens. So whenever you get involved in an incident like this, um, it's called it. Obviously, um, it's there's a disciplinary infraction that's involved. Um, you've broken or <laughs> you've broken a rule um, by stabbing another inmate. So what it's called is called a CDC 115. Um, they write you up. It's a lockup. They, they they write up a lockup order and they send you to the hole because you have assaulted another inmate with a weapon. Um, so while we were in the watch office for seven or eight hours, this is what they were supposedly doing. They were typing up our 115s, our lockup orders. And, uh, you know, this was this basically justified uh, um, or this was the process that that they follow whenever they lock somebody up in administrative segregation. So. That's what they were doing. Um, but like I said, it's called a 115. It's an A1 offense. A lot of the times, man, these A1 offenses, they're referred to to the district, to the local district attorney in the county, whatever that prison is located in. Um, but they, they, they hardly never pick them up unless it's a homicide or unless it's it's a lot of the times if it's an if it's an assault on staff, they'll pick it up. Um, but most of the time they, they just kick it, they kick it and, uh, they kick it back and basically let CDC deal with it in-house and CDC will usually give you a, a shoe program. Um, you'll pick up a 15, uh, month shoe program or in this case, um, 
They validated us. They used this situation right here to validate all seven of us that were involved. Anyway, so this is what happened when they took us to the to the hole. They took us to administrative segregation. I get back in there. Um, one of the first things that they do when 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 you go into an administrative segregation unit like this, obviously we came in handcuffed. They put you in a small cage. This is so that they can strip you out, make sure that you don't have any other weapons on you or any kind of contraband. Um, and then they keep you in that cage for however long. You're coming into a new house, so they're going to make sure, they're going to find you a cell. And uh, you'll, you'll be in that cage until they get your cell ready, until they process their paperwork, until they do whatever they got to do. So you're in the cell or in that cage uh, for, I don't know, it, it depends, man. Hour, two hours, it depends. During the time that I was in the in the in that in that cage, I'm communicating with some of the other homies. I could see them. They're all there's there's three sides. There's three sections: A section, B section, and C section. Where I was located is basically in the middle of B section. That's where the cages were at. I can see all three sides, and everybody's got a window on their door. Uh, it's like a little uh, what do you call it? It's like a uh, <sighs> um, it's not a square. It's a uh, like a rectangle. I don't know. I don't fucking know, man. But it, there's a window, and the you know the homies can see you when you're in the cage, and you can communicate as well as anybody else. Everybody stands on their window when everybody when anytime anybody comes into the unit, um, everybody's on their window checking out the scene, man. So I'm in the I'm in the cage, and I'm basically letting the homies know why we all came in. Some of the other homeboys uh, that came in with uh, with me, Paco, Chino, Tony, Wino, they're in other cages. They're doing the same thing. They're communicating with other homies that they can see um, through uh, um, sign language. Anyway, uh, I let the homies know that uh, shit got funky on the yard. Um, and basically, we, we took flight. That's what happened in a nutshell. So, me and Wino were cellies on the main line when we were out there on the yard. So, they basically put us in the cell because we were, obviously we were compatible. So, we get in the cell. After they process us in, they come, strip us out, uh, dress us out in, in um, administrative segregation clothes. Basically, when you're in ADSEG, you don't get to wear no, uh, no general population clothes. Don't get to wear your sweats and all that Bonnaroo shit, uh, sweatshirts, thermals, and none of that. You don't even get to wear blue jeans or none of the the clothes that they wear out there on the main lines. The blue shirts and none of that shit. All you wear in that seg is a t-shirt, your boxers, your socks, and your deck shoes. If you're lucky to get deck shoes, most of the times you get jap flaps, what they call jap flaps. Them them Chinese like shoes that that you slip and slide everywhere on them motherfuckers, man. Um, anyway, so they strip us out, uh, dress us up in, uh, in ad seg, uh, in our boxers and socks and shit, t-shirt, and then they escort us to a cell. So we get up in the cell. One of the first things we do is, is check out the cell. Um, uh, that's one of the things I always did every time I, that's just something that, that, uh, you're taught early on, but it's something, it's a habit I've always um, every time I moved into a new cell, I always looked in there for weapons or, or, you know, I just do a quick security check, check, check the whole cell out. After that, we clean the cell from top to bottom. Um, uh, most of the time the cells are dirty as fuck, man. Um, so anyway, after we get through cleaning and scrubbing the cell, setting everything up, you know what I mean? Um, I commenced to communicating with the homies. So where I was situated, where our cell was situated, we were in C section. I believe we were somewhere around, I wanna say, if I can remember, C section, I believe it started at around 2.34 and it ended at 2.50. So we were around two, I wanna say 2.40, 2.44, somewhere around there, right by the shower, two or three cells away from the shower. So anyway, I'm communicating with the homeboy that was in B section. 
close to the shower over there. So I got a, the vantage point where my window's at. I got a direct line to him. I can see him clear. So anyway, we start communicating. And uh, I can't really see him. Um, the sign is that the distance is too far for me to get a, a, a visual to see his sign language. So what I do is I get a book. And um, in the book, I write I write a little code up in there, and I I ended up I end up shooting it to him, and I have a CO um, end up walking it over there to him. Hey, can you shoot this book over there when they were doing lunches? And you know, CO he fanned it, didn't see shit, and was hidden up in the book. It was a key though. The, so basically, what I did is I devised the key, or I devised the code to uh, communicate. And I'll, I'll call it the window code, because that's what I that's what I called it back then. So, um, what it consisted of is it consisted of you taking a towel and bunching it up in your hand and wiping the window. So I'll give you an example. So from the middle, say your window's so long. From the middle down is A B C. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. There's 10 letters, right? So A is one wipe. Um, B is two wipes. Three is C wipes. So then you got, after the next 10, um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. From J, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. From J to S, you don't go from the middle down, you go from the top to the middle, wipes, right? So J is so many wipes, K is so many wipes, so on and so forth. When you get to the last six, they're full wipes. You wipe the, 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 the whole window, right? When you get done with the word, you, you wipe it one time across. So it was fully explained, we had it down, um, homeboy understood the code joel from uh, san jose joel from san jose was sold up with another homeboy named dopey i didn't know dopey period uh, uh personally um he came from the i believe he came from the one yard joel was the individual if you guys recall um that got into it with my homeboy joe curly again you remember the incident where my homeboy basically uh pushed up on joel and he threatened him, if you come back to the cell, I'm going to fucking stomp you out. And the hermanos on the yard gave Joel a, a piece. And um, Joe basically took the piece from him and then spanked him. Anyway, they, they both got rolled up. Well, Joel was still there. Joe was gone already. He got transferred out. So anyway, I'm getting at Joel, right? And, uh, you know, every time, every time I, I end up completing a word... Or a letter, I write it down. So I understand the fucking code, right? So anyway, after some some small, after the formalities, we get the formalities out the way. He gets at me and he tells me, hey, bro, I need to get at you about something serious. And anyway, when he's sending me the code, I'm writing it down. And as I, as, as the words start coming, man, the hair on the back of my neck literally starts standing up um, because the, co the, the the message was that the homeboys were going to move on me because they felt like I gave up the yard. Now, let me under let me explain this to you guys so you guys understand the politics. So back in these days, um, in the early 90s, the late 80s, the NR, the NF was real big on establishing main lines, making sure that Northanials could go to some of these main lines and do their time without being threatened or without, with, like some of the bonds say, without the, the threat or the interference of the opposition. Now, whenever the NR had a presence on a main line and they, they considered it a yard that was established under NR um, control, we maintained that yard. We held on to it. Um, we never gave we never gave that yard up unless it was like a massive war out there and maybe the Southsiders took us off the yard or something or they, they blasted all the NR members and we lost that yard. But as long as there was NR members out there on the yard 
It was considered a yard that was established, a yard that was under in our control, in our direction. It was a it was an active, fully active household. So Susanville Yard Three at that time was a fully active yard that was under in our control. That yard functioned um, per in our policy. The North Daniels out there were aware that that you know that hermanos were out there and we set the policies on the on that yard and there was a, a open line of communication to the bay and we were running that yard accordingly anyway so when the, the decision was made to remove these targets um all the hermanos went at that time i was running the yard i had the keys so it, it, it everything basically fell back on me any of the decisions that were made I was responsible for them no matter how big or how small so um when Joel is when he's relaying this information to me I'm like what the, why would the homies move on me what the how is that even possible for what you know what I mean? For, we just got off on the yard. What are you talking about? And he told me basically the homies felt like I gave the yard up because there was now no NR members out there on the yard holding it down. So his reasoning or uh, according to what they were saying, their reasoning was they felt like I gave the yard up, that I should have I should have stayed back or I should have designated one or two hermanos, however many, to, to maintain a presence out there on the yard. So, you know, I get this information and I tell Wino, I'm like, hey, homie, check this out, bro. Look, look at, <laughs> look at this fucking message that I just got from this fool, right? Now, you guys got to understand something. Wino, straight soldier, good ass homeboy, man. The type of dude you want on the team. Um, you know, Wino respected and believed in our politics, and our politics, NF uh, politics. But there was, you know, Wino was also he's he's a, he's a soldier, man. He's like, you know, he also um, invested some level of loyalty in the people that he fucked with, and me being his celly, um, you know, he fucked with me, man. Uh, I mean, we, we rocked together on that yard, man. Uh, so when I told him, he was like, well, what are you going to do, man? You know, we sat down, we talked about it. I'm like, bro, man, I mean, what do you, there ain't nothing I really can do. I mean, I'm going to go out there and get off, bro. There's, that's the only thing I can do. I'm going to go get off, bro. You know what I'm saying? As, as fucked up as this situation is. I'm not just gonna go out there and let them cats get the drop on me, man. There is, there's no way, man. I'm, I'm just gonna allow that to happen. Homeboy, homeboy tipped his, you know, he tipped their hand. He told me what was up. I mean, what, what am I gonna do, Wino? You know, he's older than me, but he was also, he wasn't an NR member. Wino was just a North Daniel. You know what I mean? Like I said, he respected our politics, but, you know, his, his position was, hey, I'm gonna ride with you, bro. You know, I'm not gonna let you ride alone, man. You know, so I'm saying, homeboy was a solid motherfucker, man. Uh, he's the type, and I was like, nah, bro. You know, he's the type of dude you want on your team. But I was like, nah, homie, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow you to fuck your career off on the count of me, bro. This is in our business. I'm gonna do this one alone, bro. You know, um, I can't allow, I can't allow you to put yourself in that situation. You're a good ass homie, bro, and um, you know. I don't I can't expect that from you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I would do the same thing if the shoe was on the other foot. But at the same time I would also expect you to look out for my best interest. I've done nothing wrong, bro. You know what I mean? I feel like I feel like these guys are making the wrong the wrong decision and I'm 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 banking on that. You know what I mean? All all I could do, Wino, is go out there, get off and, and take this up to the bay and file a report and, and let them brothers know this is what happened. 
This, this is the situation I was in. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Go out there and allow myself to just be here. Uh, allow them to give me a Kool-Aid smile, cut my throat from, from uh, you know, ear to ear, and knowing that this was going to happen? Nah, man. That's not my DNA um, to allow something like that to happen anyway. So, um, I was stressed out, man. I'm not going to lie. I was stressed the fuck out. I wasn't scared. I was stressed out because here I was, man, in the, in, in, in the cell, I was plotting on my own people. Um, I felt, I felt like I was betraying my people to an extent, but I felt like they were betraying me too, man. I was just, it was a fucked up time. I mean, it was gonna be like, I, I think it was like, it was around 10 days or a week before I went to committee and got cleared to go to yard. So when I first came in to ad say, you don't just go right out to the yard. You gotta go to ICC. Um, institutional um, classification committee and they need to clear you in order to go to the yard that's with every prison anywhere that you uh, anywhere you go so you know I had about a week 10 days to uh, stew on this shit man and uh, you know it was fucked up because you know like during shower time I will come out with with the homie and we jump in you know we we, we come out for our shower program we'd shower but i walked by the homie cells and i look at them and i just felt like man you know these guys are smiling in my face at the same time man these dudes are plotting on me as well man so it was just it was funky man it was fun it was a funky situation to be in anybody that's been in that situation you guys know what i'm talking about you know when your own fucking people are plotting against you oh it's a it's a bad situation when you have to plot against your own people because you know they're 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 gunning for you, um, it's just it's it's a bad feeling, man. I was supposed to be like, you know, I was supposed to be like, man, uh, you know, we came in for handling our business. Um, we took out a, 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 you know, we took out their leadership. Um, shout out to all the Southsiders, man. You know what I mean? Nothing but love, but we took out their leadership. And um, it was something that at that time I should have been like, you know, hey, I, I handle my business, man. You know what I mean? With everybody else. But that shit, that shit wasn't even something that I was thinking about. That, you know, that was some secondary shit. I had to think about what was going on in, in, in the hole now, man, uh, and what was going to happen once I hit the yard. So, you know, for like I said, man, those 10 days, man, I was in the cell stressed out. You know, why no? He asked me like, <laughs> he asked me like, how are you gonna do it, bro? What are you gonna do? Just so I know when we get out to the yard, man. And and I was like, bro, um, I'm not gonna wait. You know what I mean? I, I I'm 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 gonna make a beeline for for uh, um, Jasper and Chino, the two uh, basically security and uh, the OA which were they were cellies and i knew they they were probably going to be together on the yard i'm just going to make it bro when we go out i'm just going to make a beeline straight for him and um that that was my plan you know what i mean i wasn't going to sit and wait or or try to get some information or or, or put my feelers out and, and try to see if i can uh, detect uh, something in the climate i wasn't going to do none of that I basically got a, 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 you know, word, confirmation that they were going to hit me, man. So, anyway, that wasn't the, the full extent of the communication between me and Joel. So, um, in, in communicating with Joel, his scenario was a little different. He was a hermano. Um, so, you know, going back and forth... Um, communicating this I, I was trying to gather as much information about it as I could like I wanted to know why who who was the one that was pushing for it like um why would they push for something like that you know like uh, uh did they understand the situation at hand out there did they understand like we were really outnumbered um 
I wanted to know as I wanted as much information as I could. I was trying to gather as much information as I could. And Joel, his position was that he felt like there was a lot of there was some bad leadership, and that uh, he didn't agree with a lot of stuff that was going on. Uh, they had just moved on another homie, um, Bumpster, from uh, San Jose, and uh, they were moving on other homies, and they were hitting Fresno. Uh, you know, this was, uh, you guys got to understand, when I was talking to Fresno out there on the yard, this was going to become an issue, too. You know, I was young. I was, like, barely 20 years old, man. I didn't have a lot of pull back then. I wasn't a leader, you know what I mean? I was just a little guppy, man. I was still a little polywog, a youngster. So it's not like I had a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, authority behind me. I didn't have no status, man. You know, Jasper had been around a little bit longer. He was youngster too, but he had been around a little bit longer than me. And he was the OA. Anyway, um, so I told Wino, like, you know, when you go to the yard over there, so what happens is they'll come up to your cell. At that time, this is how they ran yard back then. They'll come up to your cell and you and your celly will strip out right there. You'll get butt ass naked and they'll run you through the through the um the routine. Hands, feet, lift them up, turn around, bend over, squat three times, cough. Boo! Um after they strip you out, they walk you down to a cage. Like the cage when you when I first came in to add sake, they'll put you in the cage. So they'll, they'll run through that same routine again. This, you know, this time they're right there. My, my guess is that they do this a second time because now, you know, you're no longer behind a door where you, you can, it's easy to hide shit. You know, your hands are, pre if you're pretty fast, you can strip out in there and be behind the door and have a pedazo on the sink or push to the side somewhere where you can reach in and grab that motherfucker and uh, cheek it real quick where they won't even see. Um, so my guess is they run you through the routine again when they put you in the cage so that you don't um, pull something like that. You know what I mean? You, you don't uh, um, grab some type of contraband and bring it out there because the door obscures a lot of, a lot of their vision. They can only see so much through that little window. Anyway, so they run you through it again when you get in that cage. Now, if you're going out to get off on the yard, you know you're gonna get off. Um, depending on what kind of shoes you, you have over there, you don't wanna put your socks on. If you got jab flaps, you don't wanna put your shoes on. Um, however, in, in that situation, you gotta be careful too, man, because if you don't put your if you don't put your socks on and you don't put your shoes on, you go out barefoot, the homies can look at that as a threat. Like everybody knows, man, you take your shoes off so that you you have traction. You you're not slipping and sliding. So it's it's um it's almost like tipping your hand. You know, if if I was to walk out there straight barefoot, um it would look funny. It might look funny. It might raise suspicion. It might not. The homies might just be like, ah, oh, he prefers to come out like that because, you know, everybody knows jab flaps are, you know, nobody wants to wear them motherfuckers. They don't do no fucking good. Um, you'll slip and slide in them, no matter what you're doing. So what I did, well, so they'll, they'll, they'll put you in that, other, in that second cage. They'll strip you out. And from there, from there, they'll walk you out to the yard. Now, when you get out to the yard, that yard in Susanville, there's two yards. But when you get out there, there's like a, a small enclosure before you get onto the actual yard. So they they open up they open up a gate. You and your celly will walk in and they'll close that gate. And like I said, it's another small enclosure. Um. There's nothing in there. It's, it's real small. It's just barely big enough for you guys to get in there, uncuff. And then there's a, another gate that leads to the yard. And when they open that gate, it's like a pull bar. They got a bar and they just pull it. And the gate opens up and you walk out. Um, 
So that's how you go out to the yard. So, you know, when I was getting at Joel and he was voicing his um, his opinion about the way that the hole was being ran and just some of the, the, the things that he didn't agree with. Um, like Wino, he told me, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to rock with you, bro. And, um, you know, at first I told him the same thing I told Wino. Nah, bro, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into getting anybody, pulling anybody into my shit. This is my shit. Um, I'm not trying to make it bigger than what it is. Um, I feel justified. I feel like this is, you know, if these homies are going to, they're going to go as far as trying to whack me, man. They're, they're going to be held accountable. They're wrong. Like, I'm going to go out and get off on these fools. But I, I I believe that that'll be justified as well. The brothers up in the Bay, will, they'll understand. The Carnaz, they'll understand. They'll be like, hey, this brother was out there. He handled his business. He gets to the hole. They end up, he ends up finding out from another hermano that they're going to move on him. So he goes out there and he handled himself like a soldier. He did what he was supposed to do. You know, I don't know what kind of fucking household them dudes are running or, uh, you know, why they felt justified to do something like that. But I felt like they were going to be held accountable and they were going to be wrong, man. So, you know, in the beginning, I told them, nah, bro, stay out of it. You know, um, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Uh, nothing but love, bro, but stay out of it. But he insisted that that he go with me. He was like, nah, bro, you know, uh, um, the brothers up in the Bay will understand as well. You know, I... I want to let them know that you know I let I let you know what time it was and that um that I didn't believe in it and that I wasn't gonna let you go down by yourself, man. So, you know, after thinking about it, I'm like, hey, bro, if that's what you feel like you want to do, then, then then that's what you do. But I'm telling you, I, I don't think it's a good idea. So anyway, I end up going to classification. After seven days, ten days, whatever it was, I end up going to classification. I go in there. I go in there like I, I would any other time. Got nothing to say. I just go in there, and when they ask me, um, you know, if I wanted to be clear for yard, I said yes, and uh, they specified that yard. I, I don't know. I don't remember what they called it, northern, uh, northern Mexican uh, yard or whatever. Um, and that was the yard I, I said I wanted to be uh, placed on. So that was it. I go in. They run through it. This is why you're here. He was involved in this incident. I'm um, going to retain him in, in uh, ad safe for another 30 days pending uh, um, um, review by Sacramento on the validation uh, package that they were drafting up on all of us. So, boom, I'm clear for yard now. Like I said, I go back to the cell. Now I'm really stressing. I'm just like, hey, it, it, there's nothing holding me back now. It's just a matter of time before I hit that yard and before shit kicks off. And, you know, it was, uh, I, I'll be honest with you guys, man. Probably That was probably one of the, the, the worst times for me in prison as far as being stressed out and, um, just being in a situation like that, man. You know, I've been in other situations that you guys hear about, but it, I was completely justified. And um, I didn't think it, it wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna um, escalate to this level right here. It was something entirely different, but you know, this was a situation that uh, I knew had the potential to um, either take me out the, the game or, um, you know, I was going to be clear. But either way, it was going to happen. So, but yeah, the day yard, the day uh, we go to yard, you know, I, I had to continuously in the cell too, continuously tell Wino, man, to stand down. He kept on insisting, hey, brother, you know, you sure you don't want me to rock with you, bro? You know what I mean? I'm here for you. You're my boy, man. You know what I mean? I'm going I'm to feel fucked up, you know, being out there on the yard watching you rock by yourself, bro. Regardless of or not, you know what I mean? I'm not involved in your guys' politics, but I know everything involved, and those dudes are wrong. They're fucking wrong, and that's some bullshit. You're you know, you're you're one of the only motherfucking soldiers um that that uh 
you know, stepped up out there, man, and, and this is what's gonna happen, bro. He's like, man, this shit, it's just not right, bro. And uh, I was like, yeah, I know, man. Trust me, bro. Um, but what can you know? There's nothing. There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it, homie. You know what I mean? Uh, just gotta go out there and handle my business, bro. But I had to continuously tell him, stay out of it, bro. Just stay out of it. I'll be cool, man. You know what I mean? I'm gonna go out, do what I do. They're gonna bust a couple times um, with that block gun. They might bust with that. You know, the one thing I, I, I wasn't going to do, though, I thought about it, but, and this is one of the only times, because I've always, anytime I've ever engaged in prison, um, unless it was like a physical altercation, if I got ready to move on somebody, it was always with the weapon. That that wasn't just, I, that it wasn't just because that NF belief system was deeply instilled within me. It was the way that I thought as an individual as well. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna do something to you, I'm gonna stab you. Or I'm gonna cut you up. I'm gonna, I'm but I'm gonna use a weapon. But this was something I thought about in this situation right here. I thought that if I took a perasso out there and I used a piece on these brothers, that that might that might swing the pendulum back. Um not in favor of me, man, because I didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? Um, going out there and just just with straight hands, um, you know, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been as, as as serious, you know. But if I go out there and I start blasting fools, um, now I might not get no sympathy up there, man. You know what I mean? In the bay, once all this shit, you know, once it was reviewed later on. But anyway, so. Uh, you know, like, like I said, I thought about taking a weapon out there, but then um, my better judgment told me, don't do it. It's not in your best interest to do it. I, I would have liked to. You know, these motherfuckers are putting me, you know, I was mad. I was mad at Chino and Jasper. Like, you motherfuckers are putting me in this position. Um, like, what kind of fucking leadership are you running out? You know, that like, you guys put me in this position. I shouldn't be in this position right now. Fuck, man, no. Um, you know, I was making sacrifices for the movement, and you guys are gonna blast me for for that because you think I is is that really what you guys thought that that was my intention to give up the fucking yard? It's just bad business, man. Anyway, show time, game time, man. Uh, the day of the yard, the day they ran yard. So I'm pumped up. I get up that morning, can't eat, don't got no appetite. Same way I felt out there on the main line when we got ready to get off. Same way I felt any time I got ready to put work in. That's why I always say it, and I'm going to say it again, man. Anybody that says that they're not scared or that they're not feeling some level of, of, of fear or that they, they don't get some type of reaction, um, you know, internally when you, you get ready to go put in work, stab somebody, stomp somebody out, whatever it is. That's just a natural react. We're human beings, man. We're not fucking computers. You know what I mean? We're not robots. Um that that is a a, a you know fear is is a natural reaction, man, to something like that. And it, it's you know sometimes um it's it's good to feel a little a level of fear. Um, that puts you on your toes, man. Um, you know, it, it, it opposed to going out being reckless. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, um, you know, sometimes fear is a good thing. Um, like I said, it puts you on your toes, and it's just, it's just a natural. It's a mechanism within yourself um, that that. Um, it can actually help you, man. I, I believe so. But you know, um, I was I was feeling uh, I was feeling jittery. Um, I didn't have an appetite, and like I said, I was stressed out. So they start running yard. Our lights are on. We're ready to go. I'm kind of like just standing by the door. I'm pissed off, but I'm also like unnerved you know what i mean i'm like i can't believe that i'm getting ready to go out here and do this shit man 
you know, the fucking homies. Like, I'm getting ready to either fuck my career off right now or, um, I mean, I, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I was being put in a, in a position to where the possibility of, of fucking my career off was, was very real, was very real. Um, you know, there's not too many situations where a hermano goes and takes out the OA and, um, you know, security and gets clear or it's justified. Uh, those situations usually turn out all bad for an individual that takes it in his own hands and goes in and wax leadership. Um, but I felt like this this situation right here, I was justified, man. I felt like I, it was, I really righteously felt like, you know, it was in my favor, that I hadn't done nothing wrong, at least not maliciously. Anyway, um, so they come up, the, the COs that start running yard, they finally come to our door. Like, I, I don't want to put too much on it. I don't want to say, like, I felt like I was going to the fucking gas chamber, but I felt like, I, you know, they were taking me on a, on a fucked up mission, you know, that um, I was just stressed out, man. But I was also getting pumped up. I had, I, I started to feel the adrenaline um, kicking in because I had, I had to pump myself up. You know what I mean? Um, and that's why I say sometimes fear is good because it leads to, uh, you know, your level of awareness starts peaking. Um, you start, you start, uh, uh, at least with me, my, my, uh, you know, I start to see things that, um, uh, not only do I, does it like, lead to me seeing everything around me but you know it's almost like my hearing gets louder um everything gets it's more intense you know what i mean so the adrenaline kicks in and, and i'm already thinking okay how is this gonna happen well, i'm gonna get in that fucking enclosure right there and as soon as that door pops i'm just gonna start walking so my thing was this as far as um as far as what i thought i was gonna do about my socks and shoes I wasn't going to put my socks on because I thought about how I was going to strip out and how I was going to get out there to the yard. I didn't want to tip my hand either. So I figured I'd just go out with just my, my jab flaps on because I didn't have, I didn't have uh, deck shoes. Deck shoes are like vans. They're a PIA, a prison industry, a prison industry's version of vans. They're slip-ons, but they, you know, they got a rubber sole and, and they got traction. Unfortunately, I didn't have them. So, my thinking was is, I'm not going to put my socks on. I'm just going to slip my fucking feet inside my uh, jab flaps. Because once I get out to the yard, I'm going to walk out there with my jab flaps. But when I get close to my target, I'm kicking my shoes off. And that's when I'm just going to go. <laughs> So, anyway, um, we strip out. I strip out. Wino strips out. They uh, they cuff us up. They walk us down the stairs. They walk us to the cages. We get in the cage. Again, we go through the routine. They strip us out again. And then uh, they start walking us out to the yard, man. It's like, I remember it was this hot, sunny-ass fucking day. The building is kind of dark in there, so you know you walk into the yard, shit starts getting light, it starts getting brighter and brighter. It was a summer day, boom! As soon as I step out, it just all hit me, man. It just got bright as fuck. I take a look over it, over here. I see the the, the southerners. Um, I take a look at this yard. I see the homies. As soon as I see the homies, I start scanning the yard. Do -do 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 -do. I'm looking at the yard, right? I'm doing a visual on who's where, what's happening out there, what they're wearing. I'm like, I'm just sizing the whole yard up, like, quick. So I look over, boom, I see Jasper and, and Chino in the corner. That's where my beat, I'm making that beeline straight for them cats. Joel was already out there, the individual that communicated that message to me. So Joel 
he wasn't on the gate. There was two homies on the gate. That's security. There's always two homeboys that that man the gate. This is an event. Um, an opposite, an op will come out, or you know, a, a an NGN, a, a no good North Daniel, or somebody comes out, tries to come out that is not welcome on the yard. There's two guys that are always on the gate, and they usually nine times out of ten they have a weapon. So I look and I see the two homies on the gate and I kind of just look at them and they, they give me a heads up like they nod at me and I nod back. I'm watching everything though. I was young and I was still absorbing a lot of schooling, but I, I was, it's always been my, my habit. It's always been, so, uh, um, not a habit, but it's always been, I've always had, um, You know, I've always been real savvy when it's come to watching shit, detecting things, um, body language, eye contact, seeing how people re are responding. Um, so it's like if I see something that that looks that doesn't look right, man, uh, you know, it sends off red flags. So anyway, I, I look at the two homies on the gate. I don't. I try to see if I can detect something in their eyes or. Something by the way they're standing, I don't detect nothing. I look over at Jasper and Chino, and I'm looking to see if they're if they're looking at the gate, you know, to see what's going on, and I don't detect nothing. I look at the other homies, some of them are playing handball, they're doing their thing, nobody's watching the gate, which kind of sends up a, a... It just seemed a little suspicious to me, man, because when, when something's going to go down on the yard... Motherfuckers might not be staring at the gate looking for the target to come out, but they're going to be glancing over there. They're going to be glancing because everybody wants to see it. Obviously, they want to see it go down. Everybody wants to see a good hit, man. Um, so, I don't detect shit, man. You know, when the canine pops the gate open, I, I step in that little enclosure, and now my adrenaline's fucking peaking. I'm ready to go now. I can feel it. I just want the cuffs to come off so I can I can go straight to the homies, man, and just fucking just let them have it. Um, straight up. I'm fucking uh I'm I'm like I'm fucking jittery. I'm 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 moving around like I am amped the fuck up, man, ready to just go. I take a look up at the gunner, I see where he's at, you know what I mean? I take a look at again at the yard, I get my cuffs off. I look at Wino. Wino's looking at me. He's just, he's just kind of got that that look on his face, like <laughs> fucking fool, man. And uh, Joel, like I said, he's not on the gate, but he's kind of like lingering behind the two securities on the gate. So, boom, the gate pops. I walk through the gate, and I'm just, I'm going sh straight for for Jasper and Chino. And it's like I'm not paying attention to nothing else. Joel tries to shake my hand, and like I'm I'm moving to the side, and I'm like trying to go around. He's like, oh, hold on. And I'm still trying to walk around him. He's like, homie, homie, wait a minute, bro, wait a minute. He's like, bro, let me get at you. Hold on, hold on, bro. And I'm like, nah, 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 bro. And he's like, homie, listen to me, bro. Listen to me. He's like, I might I might have fucking been jumping the gun, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't trying to hear it. What do you mean you might be jumping the gun? You know what I mean? It's like, I'm trying to, now I'm trying to fucking calm myself down because I had just pumped myself up. And now this fool is, is, uh, He's fucking, he's fucking me up, man. You know what I mean? Um, he's like, bro, I'm, I might, I might have got that information twisted, bro. And like, I, I, I want to hear his explanation because, like I said, I couldn't detect nothing on the yard. Now, he's got me second guessing myself. So he's like, look, bro. He's like, let me tell you, bro, what happened. So, Sleepy was on the yard when, me, when me, Jasper, and Sleepy were the last three homies to go in from the last yard. And well, right before Sleepy went in, Jasper told him, hey, um, on that next yard, when that, when that if that comes out, you know, we're gonna take care of that. And Joel told me, I assumed that to be you based on other conversations that were previously had about the yard and about you giving up the yard. And I'm like, bro, I'm not getting you, bro. I'm not understanding. How how did you make that connection? I mean, 
how did you how did you draw those conclusions based on that? I mean, you, you specifically told me that they were gonna hit me. So now, you know, now I'm this whole situation just seems kind of fishy, man. Um I'm uncomfortable out there, but my career meant everything to me at that time. I didn't want to go out there and fuck it up. I didn't want to go out there and bomb on Jasper and Chino. I didn't want to do none of that. I would have, I would have preferred for things to be di be different. And um, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to allow myself to become a target either. So, you know. Now I'm at kind of like I'm I'm at an impasse, man. You know I don't want to confront Jasper and Chino because I'd be breaking Joel's confidence, and he'd surely get hit for that. There's no doubt about it. I didn't want to do that because for one he was looking out for my best interest, but at the same time, why would he tell me that? Why why would he why would he tell me that? Why would he mislead me purposely and and basically put me in a situation where I was getting ready to fuck off my career? So I don't say nothing that yard. I just I I just kinda like for the remainder of the yard, I'm I'm watching all the homies. I'm like I'm not really letting nobody um come up behind me. I'm not, you know, I'm watching for anybody, any, any, anybody to, to group up like in twos. I'm just watching for anything like that. I didn't see none of that. Um, Jasper and Chino, when I talked to them, I mean, my my spidey senses were tingling like a motherfucker. When I had a conversation with them, I was like really trying to detect anything. And I couldn't detect nothing, man. They were like, bro, well, what's up, homie? You know what I mean? And uh, it was like, damn, bro, homie told me what happened on the yard. And it was like, fuck, man, you guys uh, you guys handled your business, man. He was like, oh. he was like, oh. you know, it's fucked up. You guys are all going to get validated now. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is, man. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, it's... It's also a disappointment, you know. We talked about a lot of the homies that were sta that stood back, and some of the homies that they had heard got hit out there. John, uh, John Blanco, John Blanco, and some other some other homies, and uh, you know, we just chopped it up, man. We chopped it up, and uh, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Um, eventually. You know, as as Yard got closer to Yard Recall, that was the second. Well, that was I knew that this was another time that I, I really had to be on my toes because a lot of times, if something's gonna kick, it's gonna kick a Yard Recall. My fucking homies like to enjoy their Yard time, do their thing out there, and then at the last minute, when it's time to go in, that's when they'll they'll uh, move on their target if there's a target to be uh, moved on. So. I knew that that was another peak time that I was going to have to be on my toes, you know. Um, but I didn't want to overthink it either, man, because I was, I was, if if homies would have came and got too close to me or if they would have just moved the wrong way, I would have palmed on them, man, you know what I mean? So I had to make sure that I was, I was really uh, paying attention to everything that was going on, man, and I wasn't um, overthinking shit overanalyzing so I guess nothing happened man um, all the way up until the last until they called me and wino in and um, boom we went back to the cell and uh, we, we me and wino we chopped it up about it it was like bro what do you, what do you think's going on bro I mean how come you know what I mean does homeboy got an agenda Joel like why would he tell you something like that now, cause I told I told Wino about the conversation I had with Joel and what he told me about, you know, uh, um, how he might have been jumping the gun and and Wino he didn't buy it either. He was like, "Bro, that's I don't I don't buy that for a minute." How do you how do you draw those kind of conclusions just based on what um, 
and what he said, man, it, it doesn't make no sense. And if the homies, if they felt like you had to go, they would have definitely moved on you during yard. It they're not going to wait two or three yards for what? There, there's no purpose, man. They would have, they would have, they would have tried to do it the first yard. Um. So, what was funny, man, is that um. So we we go back to the cell. Nothing happens, obviously. The the very next yard. When we get ready to go out, Joel and Dopey lock it up. Now I understand what was going on. I could I couldn't believe it, man. Joel and Dopey basically refused to come back out to the yard and had communicated to somebody over there, one of the homies in B section or A section, that uh it got back to Jasper that they were done. That they were done programming, they didn't want nothing else to do with, with us, and that they were they were done. When I as soon as I heard about that. That's when I was like, motherfucker, man. These motherfuckers almost, or at least Joel, almost played me out of pocket. So, this fool was on his way out. And he tried to take me with him. Them homeboys never thought about moving on me. He just told me that. I think, I, I, I never talked to Joel about what happened. Never had an opportunity to talk to him about it. But I think that when Joel got out to the yard and he seen when I came out, he seen how serious I was that he, he pumped the brakes and was like, nah, fuck it. This fool's, you know, I don't know. Maybe he thought I was going to lock it up, man. I have no idea. But I don't know why he would think that. Oh, that's not the way I conducted myself up there. He knew me on the yard, but I don't know. I don't. I, I couldn't make sense of it. I'll tell you guys this before I close this episode up, though. Once Joel had made his bed and had basically locked it up, I had no more respect for him. If anything, I was I was more upset now because I know he tried to play me out of pocket and he tried to take me with him. So I didn't feel like there was any reason for me not to break his loyalty now or his confidence. Now I wanted to confront Jasper and Chino. Now I felt like it was okay. This fool locked it up. He was gone anyway. So, you know, breaking his confidence didn't mean shit now. The following yard, I got at Jasper and Chino and I told them what Joel had conveyed to me. And they were blown away. They were like, are you fucking kidding? Are you serious, bro? <laughs> they were like, homeboy. Nobody's ever talked about moving. Bro, that's the craziest fucking thing that, and I mean, these dudes, I know when somebody's lying to me. I know when somebody's trying to play me out of pocket or when somebody's trying to smooth something over. These dudes looked like they were um, genuinely flabbergasted. Like they were surprised. They were like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? They looked like looked at each other and was like, dirty motherfucker, bro. He tried to take you out with them. But why wouldn't? I, I still couldn't. I still couldn't um, figure out, well, why didn't he just let me let me go? Why didn't he just let me take off on Jasper and Chino? Maybe he got out there and he, his, his panties got all wet and, and, and he figured, you know what? I don't want to know. I don't feel like getting shot at today. I don't know. But that's what happened. That's what happened, man. That right there was the closest that I came to sabotaging my career as an NR member, 21 years old. Who knows what would have happened if I would have moved on those homies. I felt justified. I felt like it would have got cleared up. But who really knows? What would have happened? Would it have, well, it definitely would have altered the course Maybe I'd have never became an NF member. 
who knows what path I would I would have took. Who knows what path that you know it would have sent me on. I don't know. Things would have definitely been different. Maybe I would have been justified. Maybe I would have been clear. But still, what 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 would have changed if that had happened? Maybe nothing. Maybe I don't know. It's it's uh it, it's something I thought about over the years though definitely. Um, there were other times I you know there were a couple other times where I got in hot water, but it wasn't because of my doing. It was because of somebody else, and it was basically me not wanting to throw them under the bus. I rolled that shit out for the homie. Um, I never got myself in a position where I was ever in trouble. Never refused to stab nobody. Never refused to uh, to participate in any kind of drama that happened. Um, never got into it with a position of authority. Never questioned nothing. I always hit the ground running. Whenever anything was ever asked of me, I always um, I was always there, front and center, ready to ready to do it. Um, But, you know, um, it was a learning experience, man. It was a learning experience. This was episode 17. Um, I'm going to delve off a little bit more about into it um, and tell you guys about some more shit that happened in Susanville in the, in the oil. This, I think I spent 17 months there. Like I said, man... Unfortunately, I got at Fresno and they told them that if they came to the oil for getting off with us, that nothing would happen. I believe I might have been able to sway Jasper and Chino to change their positions had Fresno got off with us. But because they didn't, when they started coming into the oil, we started hitting them. I was young. Again, I was 20 years old and I was following directives. I didn't want to be involved in that. I liked a lot of those homies, and they were deep as fuck, and they were some solid-ass dudes. But anyway, this is episode 17, man. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. To all the naysayers out there, you cats that dropped them crazy-ass comments, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? What fucking planet are you living on? You know what I mean? I play politics the way I was supposed to play them. If you... You that dropped that comment, if it would have been you, you're telling me that you would have told those cats that it was true, that you guys were going to move on them? You're stupid, man. You're fucking stupid if, if that's how you think. And you think that, that that was like a lack of honor by me doing that? No, nah, man. Um... If anything, Eddie Boy, he respected it. He respected my get down, man. Of course, at the end of the day, nobody likes to be misled or lied to because we had a good rapport. And I'm sure he was hoping that, he had hoped that if there was an issue that we would have been able to communicate and that we would have been able to get past it by either getting somebody off the yard or by, you know, the meeting of the mind somehow, some way. Of course. But I seen Eddie Boy in, in the oil. He ended up getting snatched up in that too. He was one of our targets. He respected, he respected, um, he, he respected me. He still respected me and he understood. Hey, Box played the game like he was supposed to, shit. If it would have been him, he would have done the same fucking thing. If they were planning on moving on us, do you think for one fucking minute that he would have told me? Hell no. Nah. So you that 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 said that, um, I'd like to just see what you fucking look like, man. You're somebody that don't know shit about prison politics and your your way of thinking is just it's so over the top, man, that um like I said, if you would have been in a position of leadership, you would have been out there on the yard. You would have been bad for the home team if you would have told them. They would have blasted. They probably would have rushed you right there. Anyway, this is episode 17. 
I'll be back for episode 18. Um, I'm going to try to get it out to you guys sometime during the weekend. I'm working on a profile that I'm trying to get out to you guys. A couple profiles. Um, I know it's been slow. Paradigm Media News hasn't put out that much content. But trust me. Once the stuff starts coming out and we catch back up. Um, we'll be back on track. So you guys that are uh, that are waiting. That are still right there believing in um, this channel. Uh, we're still pushing man. You know what I mean. <clears throat> so. Um, I'll try to get that out. This weekend, um, me and me and uh, Jerry will be putting on the podcast either during the weekend or maybe Tuesday. I'll let you guys know in the community section. Um, with that said, you guys stay safe. I appreciate those of you who are uh, continuing to support the channel. All the positive comments that you guys give inner demons. Um, I see all the comments. I might not answer all of them. But I see them all. I read through them. I appreciate you guys, man. I hope that they're helping somebody out there. You know, YouTube is not made for getting people out of out of the game. That's got to come from somewhere out there on the streets. But hopefully, it's a conduit. Um, hopefully, that there's somebody that's watching this, and they're soaking up some game, saying, "You know what, man? Uh, damn." That's not only a treacherous lifestyle to live, but that's something I don't want shit to do with. Um, I think that's be that's beneficial right there in itself. So, with that being said, man, um, <clears throat> you guys stay safe, and I'm out.